Welcome to the Department of History at the University of Akron. I'm Dr. Martin Wainwright, the department chair. You are probably visiting this site because you are interested in history. So in this presentation, I'm going to do three things. First, I'll explain why it is important to study history and for society to get an, an accurate view of the past. Then I'll explain what you can do with a history degree. Finally, I'll show you what you need to do to get a Bachelor of Arts in History at the University of Akron. As recent debates over the removal of Confederate statues demonstrate, our knowledge and interpretation of the past shapes our understanding of the present. If we don't understand the past, such as American support of regimes in the Middle East, we can't understand the present, such as Muslim anger at the United States. On the other hand, we sometimes think we know what happened in the past. Pictured here is Columbus trying to persuade the king and queen of Spain that the earth is a sphere. When in fact, our assumption is wrong. Ancient and medieval Europeans and Arabs already knew the earth was a sphere. Columbus just thought it was smaller than his detractors claimed. History is important because we can only find out why things are the way they are by studying how they got that way. Some people argue that we must learn about history because it repeats itself. Others have argued that it rhymes. We can certainly learn from the mistakes of the past, but we need to be careful. When men first landed on the moon, people back on earth were comparing Neil Armstrong to Columbus. As decades passed without anyone going back, Many suggested that our visits to the moon were more like those of the Vikings 500 years before Columbus, who stayed temporarily on the shores of North America and then left. But whether or not we fully understand the significance of present events in terms of the past, there is no doubt that the past is our inheritance. Thousands of years ago, people etched their records in stone. Today, we do it digitally and seemingly temporarily on computer screens. But the symbols we use to write are direct descendants of writing systems developed 3,000 years ago. History is not just learning about the past. It is also learning about how to interpret it. Our understanding of history is constantly changing and we must learn to appreciate how different generations have interpreted the past through the lenses of their times. Even the ways we encounter the past constantly change. Before the age of film, we learned about the past through storytelling, historical novels, and even plays. Now we can add video games to the variety of ways we engage with history. Which of these is the most accurate? Come and study history and find out. But you will no doubt ask, what can I do with a history degree? I may love studying history, but I need to get a job with this degree after I leave college. Claims that humanities and social science degrees don't get you decent paying jobs are simply incorrect. Many employers recognize the value of these degrees and the reasons aren't difficult to find. A history BA, for instance, teaches students some very practical skills that are in demand across a broad set of professions. It teaches the assessment of the present in which you learn how to assess previous events that have led to current situations. Communication. You persuade an audience through oral, visual, and written presentation. Context. 
determine at circumstances behind a source or artifact's creation and its use. Motive, determine the motives behind people's statements and actions. Organization, organize evidence and presentations. Perspective, understand multiple viewpoints behind an event and assess bias. Most important of all, the History BA teaches you how to learn. This skill is the most important because technology is constantly changing. A skill set you learn today will be obsolete in a decade, and it is impossible to be sure what will replace it. The circumstances in which we work are constantly changing, and history is all about change. So every year, the National Association of Colleges and Employers conducts a survey that asks employers what they most want in prospective employees. Here is the latest list. And I want to point out some aspects of this list that fit very well with what a, a history bachelor's degree uh, trains you to do. First, communication, oral, written, and visual communication are vital in the study of history, and we train you how to do that. Uh, teamwork, less important in the history degree, but often when you're, it comes to making presentations, making decisions and solving problems. This is very important, and it's very important that you study, of course, how other people in the past made decisions and solved problems and critique what they did, and think of ways that they could have done things better. Planning, organizing, and prioritizing are all integral parts of historical research. Obtaining and processing information, likewise. While not all history and historical research involves the analysis of quantitative data, a surprising amount of it does. Then, of course, employers want technical skills related to their jobs. Uh, but remember, those technical skills are constantly changing that they require. What you're bringing is the ability to learn those technical skills. And that may include using computer software. We never normally think of a history degree as particularly training you in computer software. Yet I know of many historians who have had to learn software depending on what the demands of their research were. Creating and editing written reports is really the bread and butter of the history degree and everybody has to learn how to do it well. And similarly, selling and influencing others. In other words, persuading people of your argument because historical presentation is all about amassing your research to present an argument about the past and, in, and an interpretation. So what can you do with a BA in history? What do people normally go into when they have got a bachelor's degree in history? Well, there's the, 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 the point with a history degree, as with so many other liberal arts degrees, is that there are so many skills that they teach you that you qualify for a wide variety of jobs. And it's really up to you to advertise to each uh, potential employer what skills you have learned in your while studying for your degree. But don't be worried about this. We help you prepare for that the challenge of advertising for those positions. Uh, among the major positions that uh, a history BA often leads uh, candidates to, government, politics, state departments, the intelligence community, civil service, archivists and museum curators, national park service, public interest and advocacy groups, legislative assistance. Now, in many of these cases, you are required to pass some extra exam in order to get into these uh, professions. 
but that is the case with many uh, degrees and many and and many professions uh, at the professional level. Law. Uh, with in order to become a full qualified lawyer, you have to get a JB, which is three years beyond uh, the history degree. And you also then have to pass the bar exam. But history is a perfect pre-law degree. Consider what a lot of what lawyers do. You might call it applied history because they are often looking at case law or at precedents, looking at what people have done and analyzing motives and making arguments using oral and written communication. With, that, with only a bachelor's degree, you can move on to become a legal assistant, uh, but uh, of course to become a full qualified lawyer, you need the JD. Education. Uh, most uh, education students going into the social studies have to take a lot of history courses. In fact, so many that we often, uh, that, we, we, that we have set up a system with the education school that allows students to get a, a degree in education focusing on social studies and for only six more credits get a, a history degree as well. Of course, many people go into the history uh, bachelor's, uh, into the history major, hoping to be a professor. Uh, but of course, that requires many years of postgraduate study with a PH uh, to, to get the PhD. Uh, I know because I went through it myself, and uh, it's a very long and difficult process. But for those who manage to, to do that, that is a very rewarding experience. Uh, of course, also with appropriate experience, all depending in whether you're in uh, uh, secondary or post-secondary education, uh, you could become an educational administrator as well. Business. A lot of people go into management, uh, particularly involving sources and personnel and also public relations and sales. These, these any, are any position that requires knowledge of different cultures. Because all of these are helped by having a, a, a history bachelor's degree, one that teaches you about different motives, different perspectives, and different cultures. And while, of course, you can go and get a business degree just simply by taking, uh, by going into a, uh, bachelor's degree in business, many people find that it is very helpful to have had a liberal arts degree first and then go on and get a master's of business administration. You may also be concerned about salaries. While there is little doubt that a bachelor of science and engineering will on average get you a better starting salary than one in history. History BA holders generally perform well. A 2015 Wall Street Journal survey of earnings among college graduates who had not gone on to get further degrees, that is they had not gone on, for instance, got a JD in law or got an MBA in, or anything like that. The, uh, this survey uh, of earnings among college graduates who had not gone on to get these further degrees found that 10 years after college, the median salary of employees with history BAs was 71,000, which was above the average for people who had graduated from college. Uh, so while, you, the, while the history degree may not have an obvious job that has the title history in for it, unless of course you go into education. There is plenty out there that you can do and plenty uh, the, of skills that you will have developed that are, that are very valuable to employers. And they 
have been over the last couple of decades increasingly recognizing this. So assuming you decide to go and take a bachelor's degree at the University of Akron in history, what is going to be expected of you? Well, we offer a bachelor's degree, and that's really the only degree we offer currently. We are in uh, uh, going through the approval process to get uh, the history BA accepted in uh, coordination with the JD in law, uh, in which there would be, you would take three years of history and then three years of law. Uh, but we also offer certificates, uh, one in public history and museum studies uh, that has to work in tandem with a bachelor's degree in history, and also area studies certificates in Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America, uh, which can be taken with a variety of, uh, of, of majors. Uh, the, in terms of taking the bachelor's degree in history, uh, you need to fulfill all the general education requirements, including the second year of a foreign language. Uh, those, however, under the current general education requirements, uh, some of those courses can be fulfilled while you are also working towards fulfilling the requirements for the history bachelor's degree. In other words, some of those courses overlap. The only course that you actually have to take that is absolutely required of all history majors is the historical methods course that trains you in how to do historical research. Other than that, you simply choose from a uh, selection of courses available uh, and make sure that you have done at least six credits each in these three fields. Field one, US and Canada, field two, Europe, Field three, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East. At least 16 credits must be from upper level, that is three or 400 level courses. And students must maintain at least a 2.0 GPA. For successful and talented students, the Department of History has one of the largest endowments for scholarships in the university. History scholarships range from anywhere from $500 to $2,500 each. And the Harris Achievement Scholarship, a non-renewable scholarship of $500 is awarded to incoming freshman students who remain history majors at least through their first year and have a 3.75 GPA on their high school transcript. This can be added on to whatever the university gives you so long as it keeps within university-wide scholarship caps. So if you're interested in doing uh, a major in history, please contact our department for further information. Our undergraduate advisor is Ms. Rose Eichler. You can contact me directly, the department chair, Dr. Martin Wainwright, and you can also simply contact the office assistant in the history department at 330-972-7006. Well, I hope to see you in the future and to have the opportunity of studying history with you. Goodbye.